Okay, so this problem says uh, how much heat in joules is required to heat a 43 gram sample of aluminum with a specific heat capacity 0 0.903 joules per gram times degrees Celsius from 72 degrees Fahrenheit to 145 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've already gleaned all the information that the problem is giving us that we're going to need for this problem, okay? The one thing, so I guess going back to, again, y'all's answers in general, a lot of us understand how to do this problem. It's not that. The thing we're having trouble with is reminding ourselves that the, um, the degree Celsius and the degree Fahrenheit have, uh, they're measuring different amounts of temperature change, okay? So you can't just subtract your 145 from 72 and get that answer and go with that problem, or do the problem that way. You've got to actually convert each one of those Fahrenheit temperatures to the degree Celsius temperature first, okay? Because, again, the magnitude of the degrees Fahrenheit is different than the magnitude of the degrees Celsius, okay? So you just got to remember that. So, how do we do this? Well,
into this equation and try to cancel them out, you oftentimes forget what units you're supposed to get to. Okay, so I encourage you once again, you know, I think this is a daily um, encouragement, okay, that you put your units into your calculation. Because we're solving for heat. Heat is units of joules, okay? It even asks you joules. So you can put kilojoules or whatever, but since this problem says joules, that's what you want to put. Some people put joules degrees Celsius, joules grams, you know, that's not joules, okay? So just keep that in mind. The cool thing is, is every one of these algebra problems will cancel out to give you the correct units, and if you get, like, for energy units, joules, you know you've done the problem correctly, okay? That's what I'm really trying to say, but just help you out. So, 43 grams, that's the mass here, right? C, 0.903 joules divided by 1 gram degree C. Okay, I like to write it like that to remind myself that I can cancel out because the grams in the numerator, grams in the denominator. And then the delta T, 41 degrees C. Again, I do it that way so I can remind myself to cancel out. And look what comes naturally from just doing that. Joules, right? That's the units that I want, okay? So, no big deal if you like to just do your calculations without your units, okay? I'm, when I look at your work, that's not what I'm looking for necessarily, okay? But, if I see you're putting the wrong units on there, I'm going to make a comment that says, put your units, it'll make your life a lot easier, okay? Okay, so now it's just multiply, multiply, multiply. So 41 times 43 times 0.903. And I get 1591.89, uh, or 989, okay, joules. But I don't write all of those numbers. Why? Because of significant digits. There's only two, three, two. So what am I gonna use? Two, right? So. 1.6 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3 joules. Or, like what Harlan was saying, you could just put 1,600 joules without that decimal point there. That says two significant figures as well. Either one of these answers is correct. Although, it might be easier for you guys right now to think about it this way, okay? Is everybody okay with what I'm saying? I think you guys are doing great. You know, it has nothing to do, I think it's just these little misconceptions, you know? And once you get, get over the fact that anything could be a conversion factor if they're equivalent, or, oh yeah, I need to plug in my units to make sure I get the right units, or, Oh yeah, degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit, they're different magnitudes. We, the, uh, the two two temperature scales are different magnitudes. Once you get those little bits of information nudged into your uh, brain, then I think you'll be set with these types of problems. Okay, any question on this one? Okay, wonderful.